Today we will be learning about the bone, the patella. The patella is commonly called the kneecap. It is situated in front of the lower end of femur, about 1 cm above the knee joint. The patella is a sesamoid bone. Now what is a sesamoid bone? A sesamoid bone is a bone which develops within and is found embedded within a tendon or a muscle. The patella is the largest sesamoid bone in human body. It is developed in the tendon of quadriceps femoris muscle and is found embedded in the tendon of quadriceps femoris muscle. The quadriceps femoris is a group of four individual muscles. These are the rectus femoris, the vastus lateralis, the vastus medialis and the vastus intermedius. These muscles differ in their origin but they share a common quadriceps femoris tendon which inserts into the patella and then to the tibial tuberosity via the patellar ligament or the patellar tendon. Now the patellar tendon or the patellar ligament connects the apex of the patella to the tibial tuberosity and improves the way the quadriceps muscle pulls on the tibia. Hence, the quadriceps femoris tendon is a common tendon by which the four component muscles of the quadriceps femoris group gets inserted to the base of patella. Now let's see the parts of patella. The patella bone is triangular in shape. So you can see all the bones here. It is triangular in shape. The bone is roughly triangular in shape and every triangle has got an apex and a base. So this pointed part, this, this pointed part is the apex and here is the base. Okay. This is the apex of patella. So the bone is triangular in shape and this pointed part is the apex and this is the base. And patella is flattened from before backwards. So the bone is altogether flattened. When you hold the bone in anatomical position, you can see that it is flattened from before backwards. So the bone is flattened from before backwards. Now the patella consists of two surfaces and three borders. The two surfaces are anterior surface and posterior surface. So here this is the anterior surface. This surface is the anterior surface. The anterior surface is the surface which is facing anteriorly and it is rough. It consists of some muscular markings which makes the surface rough and this is the anterior surface. And here comes the posterior surface. This is a surface which faces posteriorly and this surface is an articular surface and it consists of an articular face set present in its upper part and this is the posterior surface. Now the three borders are medial border, lateral border and the superior border. We will see the borders in detail later. Now these are the parts of patella, two surfaces, three borders and one apex. Now let us see the side determination of the bone patella. As I told earlier the patella is triangular in shape and it consists of a pointed apex and a base. So this is the apex and the first point regarding the side determination is that the pointed apex it is directed downwards or the pointed apex it lies inferiorly. So here is the inferior aspect and here is the superior aspect and the base is directed upwards or the base lies superiorly. And the next point is that how do you differentiate between the anterior surface and the posterior surface. Here is the anterior surface as we have already seen and I already told that the anterior surface is rough due to the rough muscular markings present in the anterior surface and the posterior surface. Posterior surface consists of an articular facet in its upper part and these features helps to distinguish the anterior and posterior surfaces easily. The anterior surface is rough with some muscular markings and the posterior surface is the articular surface which consists of an articular facet present in its upper part. Now here is the facet, articular facet present in the upper part of the posterior surface and this facet it is divided into 
two parts by a vertical ridge. So this is the articular facet present in the posterior surface and this articular facet it is divided into two parts by a vertical ridge. Here this is the vertical ridge. So when you observe the bone you can understand the vertical ridge. This is the vertical ridge. Here is the vertical ridge and this articular facet it is divided into two parts by this vertical ridge and this is one part and this is the next part and this part is larger and this part is comparatively smaller and this larger part it is called the lateral facet and this smaller part is called as the medial facet okay so the lateral facet in the sense it is the facet which lies laterally and the medial facet lies medially so the third point to determine the side is that the lateral facet this lateral facet present on the posterior surface is larger and deeper than the medial facet okay so this larger and deeper facet present in the posterior surface it is the lateral facet okay so that means you have to conclude that this is the lateral aspect and this is the medial aspect okay and thereby you can determine the side now the three points of side determination are first is that the apex it is directed downwards and the base is directed upwards then the anterior surface is rough and the posterior surface consists of an articular facet in its upper part then the lateral facet on the posterior surface is larger and deeper than the medial facet so here this bone when you try to hold the bone in anatomical position with the anterior surface and the posterior surface here and with the apex directed downwards and this is the larger facet and hence to conclude that it is the lateral facet and holding the bone in anatomical position you can conclude that this is the left patella the patella of left side now examine this bone see here is the apex and here comes the base and this is the anterior surface and this is the posterior surface and here is the articular facet present in the posterior surface and here is the vertical ridge which divides the articular surface into a lateral part and a medial part and lateral part or the lateral facet is the larger and deeper one or you have to conclude that the larger and deeper one it is the lateral facet and here is the medial facet it is smaller compared to the lateral facet and now with all the points of sight determination holding the bone in anatomical position you can conclude that this is the right side patella the patella of right side now let's see the surfaces and borders in detail first of all about the anterior surface so the anterior surface is what you see here the anterior surface it is subcutaneous and convex the anterior surface is subcutaneous we can feel it at the anterior aspect of the knee joint just underneath the skin and it is convex the anterior surface is convex convex and subcutaneous and as I told earlier the anterior surface is rough due to the rough muscular markings the anterior surface bears some rough muscular markings and anterior surface is covered by the tendon of quadriceps femoris and the anterior surface is separated from the skin by the prepetalar bursa now let's look into the posterior surface the posterior surface consists of an articular part and a non-articular part an upper articular part and a lower non-articular part so here is the upper articular part and here is the lower non-articular part and this upper articular part it has a facet and this facet is oval in shape so here is the upper articular part which has an oval facet and this oval facet it is divided into two parts by means of a vertical ridge so here 
this is the vertical ridge and this vertical ridge divides this oval facet into two parts one lateral facet and one medial facet the lateral facet is the larger one and the medial facet is smaller when compared to the lateral facet so here is the lateral facet which is the larger and deeper one and here comes the medial facet which is smaller the lateral facet articulates with the lateral condyle of femur and the medial facet articulates with the medial condyle of femur now here is the bone femur and here is the lower end of femur and this is the anterior aspect of the lower end of femur and lower end of femur consists of two condyles the medial and lateral condyles and two articular surfaces the patellar articular surface and the tibial articular surface here is the patellar articular surface and then here comes the tibial articular surface and this patellar articular surface articulates with the articular part present in the patella and here is the lateral facet present in the posterior surface of the patella and here is the medial facet and here is the medial condyle of the lower end of femur and here is the lateral condyle of lower end of femur and here comes the patellar articular surface and to this patellar articular surface the patella articulates in this way in such a way that the lateral facet present in the posterior surface of the patella articulates with the lateral condyle of femur and the medial facet articulates with the medial condyle of femur so this way the medial and lateral facets articulates with the corresponding surfaces of the medial and lateral condyles of the femur and then the vertical ridge which is present in between the medial and lateral facet this vertical ridge this vertical ridge it fits into the groove on the patellar surface of the femur so in the lower end of femur here is the patellar articular surface so patellar articular surface presents a groove in the middle and this groove to this groove fits the vertical ridge present in the posterior surface of the patella which is present in between the lateral facet and the medial facet so this way the the vertical groove present in between the lateral facet and the medial facet it fits into the groove on the patellar articular surface of femur now about the lower non articular part present in the posterior surface so here is the lower non articular part and this part it gives attachment to the ligamentum patellae now let's look into the borders the three borders are medial border lateral border and superior border the superior border it is also called as the base so we have already seen the base here is the apex this pointed part is the apex and here comes the base so this is the base or the superior border so in this bone the triangular shape and here is the apex and this is the superior border or the base and the other two borders are the lateral border and the medial border we have already distinguished the lateral and medial aspects of this bone by locating the lateral and medial facets present in the posterior surface so this is the lateral aspect and here is the medial aspect so holding the bone in anatomical position here is the lateral aspect where the lateral facet is present and here is the medial aspect where the medial facet is present and now here comes the lateral border this is the lateral border and here comes the medial border okay once again this is the apex and here comes the base or the superior border and here is the lateral facet of the posterior surface and hence this is the lateral border and here is the smaller medial facet present in the posterior surface and hence this is the medial border now the superior border or the base it is a thick border so here you can see this is the base it is a thick border and it gives insertion to the rectus femoris and vastus intermedius portions of the quadriceps femoris tendon and this is the medial border 
This medial border, it gives insertion to vastus medialis portion of the quadriceps femoris tendon and this is the lateral border. The lateral border gives insertion to vastus lateralis portion of the quadriceps tendon. And finally, about the apex, as we said, it points downwards and it gives attachment to the ligamentum patellae. That's all about the bone patella. I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching.